the psalmist says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take their refuge in Him. Good morning, friends. As minister of Motherwell St. Mary's Parish Church, I'd like to uh, give you all a very warm welcome this morning to our online service on what is the first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of a new church year. Today, we meet to share together in word and in sacrament. And as we worship, the love of God the Father welcomes us. The grace of Jesus Christ, the Son, awaits us. The joy of God, the Holy Spirit, enfolds us. And because it's Advent, what we're going to be doing today and over the next four Sundays is light our Advent candles. Today is the candle of hope, and it's my uh, pleasure to invite the Greenhorn family to come and lead us in our Advent candle liturgy. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them his light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Jesus, the light of the world. Our first candle of Advent is the candle of hope. We light this candle of hope to remind us that our hope is in Jesus, Emmanuel, the living Lord, who is always with us. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the hope you give us through Jesus. As we worship you on this first Sunday in Advent, fill us afresh with the light of his hope. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the one born in Bethlehem, that first Christmas. Amen. Thank you so much, Stuart, Heather, and Ailey for lighting our first candle, the candle of hope. Tomorrow is St. Andrew's Day, and to mark St. Andrew's Day coming tomorrow, I thought today for all our music in church, we would use uh, Scottish uh, themed songs and melodies. So our opening hymn today is paraphrase 19, or in the old church hymn book of the Church of Scotland, it was paraphrase 19. The race that long in darkness pined have seen a glorious light. Let us worship God.
let us join together in our opening prayer, which we'll conclude with the saying together of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we begin Advent. In this season of waiting, of longing, of preparation, we seek Your light. In our own lives, we seek Your light. In our families, we seek Your light. In our places of work, we seek Your light. In our church, family, we seek Your light. In our wider parish and community, we seek Your light. In our nation, we seek Your light. Indeed, Lord, in the whole of the world, we seek Your light. In the midst of this current COVID-19 crisis, Lord, we continually seek Your light. Jesus said, Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Ask, and it will be given to you. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. May we, each one, have eyes to see you, ears to hear you, and hearts to welcome you as you come afresh into our world and our living this Advent and Christmas season. Bless us today, Lord, on this Advent Sunday, as we meet you anew in both word and sacrament, in Scripture, bread and wine, food to nurture our hearts and our minds. And Lord God, hear us now as we say together the family prayer that you have taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because it's communion today, we are having our family news a little bit earlier in the service. And we begin with some birthdays. I have one or two birthdays and an extra one uh, that's not on screen to add in a moment. So, today we have three folks celebrating their birthdays. Margaret Law, Nan McMillan, and my son, Andrew Calder. So, to all of you celebrating your birthdays today, may you have a, a happy and blessed birthday. And then, coming up throughout the rest of the week, Isabella Jelly, Alistair Malcolm, Marjorie Banks, and not on the list, but on our computer, working the cameras today, Stuart McHugh-Dick, whose birthday is on the 5th. So, to all our friends, whether today or during the week, celebrating birthdays, on behalf of myself and the whole congregation, happy birthday to you. May it be a blessed and happy time. We don't have any anniversary pictures in this week, but we do have three wedding anniversaries to celebrate. Stuart and Alison Ralston, celebrating 36 years. Billy and Sheila Brown, 37 years. And John and Carolyn Brownlee, 37 years. And to all our couples celebrating their anniversaries this week, we wish you a very, very happy anniversary. Last week, I believe that I made a mistake when it came to Doogie 
and Margaret. I added an extra 10 years on to their marriage. I said 47 years when it should have been 37 years. Correct that this week. Uh, and I hope you had a lovely wedding anniversary. The Boys Brigade aren't able, like so many organizations at the moment, aren't able to have their coffee morning this year, which is usually a, a, a wonderful entry into the Christmas season for us as a church family, full of fun, life, vitality, uh, and excitement. So we're missing that, uh, but also the, the, the organization, the 13th Motherwell uh, Boys Brigade, are missing much-needed funds because uh, we provide, as a church, uh, for them, uh, as a, a baby unit, we provide for our young folks their, their capitation fees and, and their camp uh, uh, costs as well. So that all needs still to be collected. So rather than do away with coffee morning, like so many people, what we're going to do is have a virtual event, a virtual coffee morning. And so that's going to be on Saturday the 5th, next Saturday in the morning at home, Make yourself a cup of coffee, uh, make yourself a biscuit or a cake, uh, put your feet up, relax, enjoy yourself, and if you would like to give a donation to the Boys Brigade, that would be absolutely fantastic. And a Just Giving page has been set up, so you're able to do that. Any more information you need, uh, please visit the church website, and you'll be able to see how you can give to the Boys Brigade. So we just hope that everyone has a very happy virtual Boys Brigade coffee morning next Saturday. Another of our church events that would be part of our excitement leading towards Christmas is the Family Film Night, which the, uh, the social committee organized. That would have been on the 12th of December this year. So we can't meet together in the halls to watch a film together, to enjoy our popcorn and our, our sweets, our drinks. But again, we can have a virtual evening, a virtual film night. Whether you want to do it on the 12th or sometime around there, I'll leave that up to you. But what we're inviting you to do is to watch a Christmas film uh, at home and then take a picture of yourself or get someone to take a picture of you or you as a family watching your Christmas film and send it in to us and it will become part of one of our slideshows. A virtual film night. Let's have lots of fun. And you can see the ways on screen that you can send your picture in to us. Again, there'll be more information on the website and the forthcoming church magazine. Coming up on Tuesday, Drama Kirk are... Uh, putting out the latest installment of their interactive Bible studies. That's at 7 o'clock, and you can see there how to get into the, the virtual Bible study. Basically, uh, uh, you're, you watch some videos, uh, and you've got times of reflection in between the videos, and it's all about the promise of the Messiah. And if you recognize one of the angels on screen, it is my good wife, Helen, and uh, she is part of of the interactive Bible study this month. So I'd invite you to be involved in that if you would like to be. Prayer tonight at 7 o'clock, just to be a reminder that we join in that with churches across Scotland. Just take a pause, light a candle, have a thought uh, for God's presence with us in the midst of our current crisis. Other family news? Well, our gift service this year, it's still going ahead. Uh, but we obviously... Uh, can't have it next Sunday as we would normally have. It's still in the midst of this lockdown period. So when we come out of the lockdown period on the 11th, uh, the Sunday immediately next to that is the 12th, and that's when we're going. To, sorry, the 13th, and that's when we're going to have the uh, the gift service. We're going to collect gifts as normal for children, and I'll say more about how you can hand that in next week. And we'll also this year have gifts for adults as well, either uh, a donation to the food bank or uh, buying some uh, grocery tokens from one of the, the local shops uh, for the uh, women's aid. So I'll tell you more about that next week and I'll also be in the church magazine. 
Church Magazine will be going live online this week, and then it will be delivered to those who get a paper copy of it. It will be delivered uh, in the week after lockdown ends, but it will be going online this week on the website. That's all of our family news. Lots and lots today. We move now to Junior Challenge. Now, for Junior Challenge, uh, first of all, can I say a huge thank you to the Junior Church for my Christmas gift bag. I know they're going out to all of the young people in Junior Church, and when you get your gift bag from Junior Church, inside there's all sorts of goodies, like a selection box, an advent calendar, uh, there is a, an angel that's been knitted for all of you by the ladies in the guild. There is your invite to the, the family Christmas night. There's all sorts of other things, reindeer food and Christmas card. And also there are lots and lots of materials for you to do some crafts over and instructions how you can do crafts over the Advent period. So get your bag and enjoy them. I'm looking forward to enjoying all the things in here, especially the, the sweeties and, and the crafts. So thank you very, very much. This week's particular challenge is to either make or just choose a, a Christmas card. You can make one yourself or just choose a Christmas card and then send it to the whole church family. The idea is all you need to do is write inside it something like to all our friends in the church family at St. Mary's and put a wee message if you would like inside it. But send it and either post it in the post box or send it to the address of the church here and it will arrive. And what we're going to do is create within the church uh, a display of all the Christmas cards that we send to one another as a church family. Uh, so it's make a Christmas card or choose a Christmas card and send it into us for next week. And it'll be part of our display and also it'll be part of our uh, slideshow next week. So that's our junior church challenge, which I commend to everyone. We're now going to read from the Bible and I'm going to invite Gillian to bring us our readings from the Old and the New Testaments. Chilling. Both our readings this morning come from the New Revised Standard Version. Our first reading is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Shrill, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How mighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Reading comes from the book of John, chapter 1, reading verses 35 to 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. As he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them looking, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are, son, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is, which is translated Peter. Amen. Thank you so much, Gillian. Before our reflections, Ronald is going to lead us in a couple of verses of the hymn, Jesus Calls Us. The word snowflake has sadly been misappropriated in recent years and turned into a term of insult. This has happened mainly on social media platforms. The word snowflake is now used to label someone negatively as weak, oversensitive, easily offended. Today, on Advent Sunday here in Motherwell St. Mary's Parish Church. I want us to reclaim 
the word snowflake, for it's a beautiful word and not a term of insult. Snowflake. Each and every snowflake is unique and different, just like the snowflakes made by our church members that were shown in the slideshow earlier. Billions of snowflakes might fall in a typical snowstorm, but no two of these snowflakes is the same. And in this sense, the snowflake is a good metaphor for humanity. There are around 7.8 billion people on the planet, men, women, and children. Five million of them live here in Scotland, but no two people are the same. No two people. Even so-called identical twins have differences from one another. You are unique and special, just as I am unique and special. Each of our lives is a gift from God the Creator. And the writer of Psalm 139 celebrates this in his beautiful, beautiful poetry. You knit me together in my mother's womb, you being God. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. Because God has created us, each one unique and special, we all have different personalities, different likes and dislikes, different talents and abilities. And so we don't need to measure ourselves against anyone else. We are who we are. And importantly, we are all equally valued and loved by the God who made us. That doesn't mean we're perfect. Far from it, as the Apostle Paul acknowledges in his letter to the Romans, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But it's as we follow Jesus that we discover our true worth in God's eyes and grow to be the people that God has made us to be. Tomorrow, as I said earlier, the 30th of November, is St. Andrew's Day. Our patron saint was a man who certainly discovered his true worth in knowing Jesus. The first thing that Andrew did when he met Jesus was to go and find his brother Simon Peter and tell him the good news. We have found the Messiah, the anointed, he said to his brother. He then immediately brought his brother to meet Jesus for himself. Out of the, the two brothers, Andrew and Simon Peter, it's Simon Peter that has become the best known, the most famous, if you like. But without Saint Andrew, there would be no Saint Peter. The two brothers were unique and special. Each had different personalities, each had different talents and abilities. Andrew was the quieter man who worked behind the scenes. Simon Peter was the more gregarious man, the one who was able to stand up in front of the crowds and speak. Both, though, were equally loved by God, and both were just as vital to Jesus in helping him to build up his church. Unique and different as each and every snowflake may be, they need each other. One snowflake on its own doesn't make a snowball thrown in fun. One snowflake on its own doesn't make a, a snowman built in joy in our back gardens. One snowflake on its own doesn't make a mesmerizing, beautiful snowstorm on a winter's day. 
They need each other. Unique as they are, they bond together. And it's because Andrew and Simon Peter and all the other disciples worked together so well, each using their own unique gifts and talents, each complementing one another. It was because of that, that working together, that the church was able to, to grow and develop and grow and grow and grow. And we are part of that church today, a worldwide church that started with that group of disciples around Jesus. My friends, as we prepare to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion today, on this Advent Sunday, also the anniversary of our congregation, may we know that each one of us, each one of us, like a beautiful snowflake falling from the sky, each one of us, like that snowflake, is unique and different, unique and special. All of us loved by the God who made us, the God who in Jesus, the baby of Bethlehem, the man of Calvary, helps us to discover our true worth and to reach our full potential. And may we know that it's as each of us work together as a church family that we're able to do so much more than we could ever imagine to help build God's kingdom of Advent hope, peace, joy, and love on earth as it is in heaven. My friends, as we gather around the communion table now, Ronald is going to play for us some music, and if you don't have some bread and wine prepared, uh, you have a wee opportunity as Ronald plays now to, to get that ready. Ye gates, lift up your heads on high, a traditional Scottish communion hymn. Let us join together in the sacrament of communion. Come, follow the light that shines for you and leads you to a stable with a manger and a child. Come, like wealthy kings with priceless gifts or like poor shepherds with only themselves to bring. Come, share together in the feast of feasts, in the supper of our Lord, where Christ himself makes us feel welcome and prepares a place for us. Come and wait upon the Lord. This is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ, the baby of Bethlehem, the man of Calvary, 
the risen Lord of life, the Prince of Peace, the Word of God made flesh. He invites us to sit with him and share in this feast, which is a culmination of the Advent hope and Christmas joy. My friends, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each and all of us. We are here today because Jesus has invited us. When Jesus was on earth, he often enjoyed meals with his friends and family. On the night before he died, when darkness was beginning to fall, Jesus sat at the table sharing a Passover meal with the disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. At this last supper, as it be, has become known, Jesus broke bread and took wine and told his disciples to remember him by following his example. Today, we are Jesus' disciples and we are glad to do what he has told us. As the Lord Jesus took bread and wine, I take this bread and this wine to be set apart for our holy use today. And as Jesus gave thanks to God in prayer before sharing the bread with his disciples, let us too give our thanks and praise to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the beautiful world in which we live the world which you have created for us to enjoy and appreciate. We thank you too for all the gifts you have given us in life, gifts of food or homes, of health, of friendship and of family. Most of all, though, Lord, we want to thank you for the greatest gift of all, the gift of your son, Jesus, who was born on that first Christmas morning. As your word says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. With joy and thanksgiving then, we remember Jesus today and ask that we might grow in our faith in him this Advent and Christmas time. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit now, Lord, and by that same Spirit, bless the gifts of bread and wine which we are about to share together. As we eat bread and drink wine today, may we be reminded of Jesus' journey from the manger to the cross, a journey that he made for us. May we recall his love that brings forgiveness, his peace that passes all understanding, and his hope that brings joy to our living. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. On the night before his sacrifice at Calvary, our Lord Jesus sat at table with his disciples. And during the meal together, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to God in prayer, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took a cup of wine during the supper and said, This cup is God's new covenant sealed by my blood. Drink from it, all of you, to remember me. Take and eat then, for this bread is the body of Christ broken for you, and drink, for this wine is the blood of Christ shed for you. Eat, drink, 
and remember him, the one who remembers you and me, who treats us all as unique and special and loved. My friends, let us take together, wherever we are this morning, the body of Christ, broken for you and for me. Let us do this in remembrance of him. This is the blood of Christ shed for you and for me. As we drink, let us remember Jesus, the one who always remembers us. In Luke's Gospel, the angels announcing Jesus' birth to the shepherds end with these words. Peace and goodwill to all people everywhere. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, be with us all. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for bread and wine today, through which we have remembered your life and love and all you taught. And may we now be filled with your living word. Build, Lord, a stable in our bodies. Place a manger in our hearts. Fill it with the light of your love, as if it were a newborn child. And be with us, Lord, now as we prepare to go back to our day-to-day life. Equip us and encourage us to share the good news of Bethlehem with others this Advent and Christmas time, and to do so with boldness and enthusiasm. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn today to the tune Aphon Kiss is May the Peace of God Go With Us. After the benediction, Ronald is going to play our closing voluntary for today, which is Highland Cathedral by John Barnard. In his letter to the church at Rome, the Apostle Paul writes this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we end this service of worship today, may the hope of God enfold us. May the peace of God surround us. And may His blessing.
fill our hearts. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this Advent Sunday and forevermore. Amen. And God bless.